The most powerful piece on the board is the queen, without a doubt. In the words of a chess historian, the queen is a warrior that, in a microcosm where all movement is regulated, she defies the narrow constraints that bind the rest of her army. But it's quite difficult to believe that this picture of the warrior queen was so widely instaurated historically. So how did this happen? Why it was decided that the strongest warrior in the battlefield of chess was to be the only female figure in the game? The answer is quite fascinating, and it shows how European history was imprinted in the game we all enjoy and play today. We've all heard some of the history of chess. It was born in India around the 6th century, it then expanded towards Persia and the Arab lands, and the Arabs brought it to Europe when they invaded and conquered some territories in the Iberian Peninsula around the 10th century. But these precursors of modern chess were very different from what we know today. Originally, there wasn't even a queen in the game, instead there was a vizier, some sort of counselor of the king. And it wasn't even that powerful. It could only advance diagonally one square at a time. The other pieces were representations of elements of the Indian armies. There were chariots, elephants, and horses. So when the game moved to Europe, the pieces needed a new meaning. So they began to reflect Western feudal structures. So the vizier turned into a queen. The horses became knights. The elephants, which were completely unknown in Western culture, became instead bishops. And the chariots turned into towers. So in the original Indian version, it didn't make any sense to have a queen on the board, since the game was a representation of war, in which there were only male fighters, either on foot or on an animal. On the other hand, in the Christian Europe, there was this monogamous ideal of a king paired to a single queen, and this queen actually shared some of the political power, since she had territorial holdings of her own. So even if the woman wasn't necessarily occupying a place in the battlefield, the figure of the queen was certainly a powerful one. And what is quite amusing is that the game changed along with the figure of the female ruler. As I said before, the queen replaced the vizier in the game, but she preserved the same movement, and therefore the same weaknesses. The evolution of European societies between the 10th and 15th century allowed increasing power to women. Queens, duchesses, and countesses began to rule Europe around this time, and this transition was reflected in the game of chess. It was during the reign of Isabel of Castile, one of the most relevant female rulers in European history, that the queen figure started moving the way we know today. So the question of why the queen piece is so strong has a pretty straightforward answer. It's because it represents one of the most powerful members of royalty in European monarchies across history. But then this raises another question. Why is the king so weak? It's definitely not the weakest piece, but if it represents the most important member of monarchy, why it is not the strongest? I hope to answer that in another video. This is it for now. I hope this was interesting to you and I want to thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more and I hope you have a wonderful day.